Hi guys, and welcome to another movie talk. Now today we're doing a little bit magical. We're off to Hogwarts and the battle and beyond because we're going to talk about the Harry Potter series. That's right. Now we go back now first to the 16th of October 2001 when Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone hit the screen. This film chronicles the uh, <clears throat> it chronicles Harry Potter's first year at Hogwarts, and it's where he first meets um, such characters as Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Rubius Hagrid, Albus Dumbledore, Minerva McGonagall, Severus Snape, Draco Malfoy. <clears throat> Basically, it's the trials and tribulations of a first year magic student. So, a first year student studying magic and the adventures he and his friends get up to. While at Hogwarts, that is. He even lands himself the spot as the Gryffindor team seeker in Quidditch a year early. Okay, now. Basically, the film is actually him in his first year at Hogwarts on a quest to save the Philosopher's Stone, which he does do. And yes, in the end, Gryffindor wins the House Cup. Now, killer line in this film comes from Professor McGonagall. And it goes something like this. Could you imagine the look on McGonagall's face if we were late? That was bloody brilliant. Well, thank you for that assessment. Thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. However, Perhaps it would be more useful if I were to transfer and Mr. Potter yourself into a pocket watch? That way, one of you might be on time. We got lost. Then perhaps a map? I trust you don't need one to find the seat. <laughs> oh, so now what do I think of this film? I thought as a first installment in a very popular film series as it became, Yeah, a seven. I rate it a good. Now we move on to the 15th of November 2002, when the second instalment of this very popular fantasy fa fantasy film franchise hit the scene. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This film chronicles Harry Potter's second year at Hogwarts, and where they learn it is now under attack and under basically under yeah under threat of closure due to the chamber of secrets having been opened again there's a plot to make most terrible things happen and we meet um, characters we meet in this film okay we meet Gildroy Lockhart that's the new defense against the dark cast teacher Ginny Weasley, Ron's younger sister. Arthur Weasley, Ron's dad. And we also meet Malfoy's dad, Lucius Malfoy. And yes. 
We also get to look into one of Tom Riddle's memories via his diary. Which of course, as we know now, is a Horcrux, but we didn't know that at the time. Killer line in this film. Well, it comes from Hagrid actually, the killer line in this film. Or at least I say, in the end the culprit is caught and identified as Voldemort acting through his younger self. We also meet Dobby, a house elf, who assigns himself to protect Harry. Then we find out he serves the Malfoy family. Ooh dear. Anyway. The killer line in this film comes from Hagrid, in my opinion, and it's after Harry falls off his broomstick and breaks his arm, or breaks his wrist. He breaks. Uh, and the line is like this: "We'll, we'll go from the Gilderoy Lockhart." Not to worry, Harry. I shall fix that arm of yours straight away. No, not you. The poor boy doesn't know what he's saying. Now this won't hurt a bit. Brachium! Emendo! <sighs> yes, that can sometimes happen. The point is, you can no longer feel any pain. And very clearly, the bones are not broken. Broken? There's no bones left! Much more flexible, though. Well, I have to say, there's another killer line, and it comes in the hospital wing. And it comes from Madame Pomfrey, the school nurse. And it's like this. You're in for a rough night, Potter. Re regrowing bones is a nasty business. You will be able to, won't you? Oh, I'll be able to, certainly. But it'll be painful. <laughs> well, what do you expect? Pumpkin juice? Anyway. What do I think of this film? As the first sequel, I'll go as far as to say it actually outdid the original. I rate it a perfect. Now we flash forward to the 4th of June 2004 when the third film in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, was released to the big screen. This film chronicles Harry Potter's third year at Hogwarts. And yes, we find out that what we believe to be an escaped killer on the loose who has broken out of Azkaban, Sirius Black. And so it's a protection mission to try and protect Harry from Sirius this time round. Okay. But in the end, it turns out that Sirius was Harry's godfather. New characters we meet in this installment include Professor Trelawney. Should have mentioned we meet Professor Sprout in the second book. Professor Trelawney. That's the divination teacher. Professor Lupin, the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher in this one. And yes, we meet. Well, we don't meet Cornelius Fudge for the first time. Actually, that's in the third, that's in the second film. But anyway, um, um. Also, we uh, I forgot to mention that we meet a new student by the name of Colin Creevy in the second film. That's annoying, but back to this one. Um, I think I've gone through all the new characters we meet along the way in this one. There aren't many of them. Second film again, we also meet a coach by the name of Money Muggle. Anyway. And what do I think of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? Oh, yeah, we also meet Buckbeak, the Hippogriff. That's another new character we meet in the third film. And we also find out that Scabbers was Peter Pettigrew. 
big reveal. Now, so what do I think of The Prisoner of Azkaban? Well, as a second sequel to Harry Potter, I saw it as another 10 worthy, yep that's right, I rate it perfect. Now we move on to the 18th of November 2005, where the fourth film in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, was released. This film chronicles Harry Potter's fourth year at Hogwarts where he is chosen to compete in the Triwizard Tournament. Now for those of you who do not know, the Triwizard Tournament is a contest that brings together three schools in a series of, ma in a series of magical challenges that were not designed for the faint-hearted. And needless to say, Harry actually goes through all of them and wins the tournament. New characters we meet in this film include Cedric Diggory, his dad Amos, Barty Crouch. We also meet Mad Eye Moody, only it isn't Mad Eye Moody, it turns out to be Barty Crouch Jr. Posing as the Professor of the Dark Arts for this film. And we also meet Igor Karkaroff and the Bulgarians, that includes Victor Crumb, and Madame Maxime, and the French witches, including Fleur and Gabrielle Delacour. And also, yes, we see Lord Voldemort properly for the first time in the series. That's right. <laughs> oh, okay. What do I think? about The Goblet of Fire. Well, it's not a perfect sequel, but it's still a good one. So, a good sequel gets a 7. Now, we move on to, I believe, this was the 20th or 18th, sorry, 18th of July 2007, where the, when the fifth film in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, was released. Now, this film chronicles Harry Potter's fifth year at Hogwarts, but it's a dark one, a very dark one, as they're preparing for the owl exams and the mysterious Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, that's right. The advance guard come to remove Harry from oh yeah another new character we meet in the fourth film is Cho Chang sorry guys <laughs> now now back to this one okay um, and Harry's being accused of being a liar, even though he isn't. That's a liar about Voldemort's return. New characters we stumble across and meet in this film include the real Mad Eye Moody, Nymphadora Tonks,
But don't call her by her first name, no, no. Definitely not. Dolores Umbridge, a force definitely not to be reckoned with, but they have to anyway. The new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, it's anything but Defense Against the Dark Arts in this film actually. Um. <laughs> okay, um... And we also meet Grawp, Hagrid's full giant half brother. Yeah. And there's also this whole thing about Harry being possessed by Voldemort. I know. Now there are no killer lines in this film, from what I know. But what do I think of the film nonetheless? Oh yeah, we also meet Luna Lovegood. That's right. A fourth year Ravenclaw girl, very eccentric. Anyway. Now, what do I think of this film? I give it a five. It's average. Now we head into. I think it was the 18th of November 2009, when the sixth film in the sixth film in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince, was released. Now this film chronicles Harry's sixth and unexpectedly last year at Hogwarts. Oh yeah, me, me, Bellatrix is strange in the fifth film, kill serious. But anyway, um, uh, this the sixth film anyway carries on. Uh, chronicles Harry's sixth year at Hogwarts, where they're so wrapped up in the mystery of who the Half Blood Prince is. Professor Snape is the defense against the Dark Arts teacher. So instead we have a new potions master, Horace Slughorn, one of the new characters in the film. And oh my, is he one good teacher or what? Apart from accidentally poisoning Ron, right okay. Then we also meet Narcissa Malfoy, that's Draco's mother. And we learn that Draco Malfoy is now a Death Eater. Yes. <laughs> anyway. This is where Professor Dumbledore meets his demise at the end. Well, what, so what do I think of this film? I thought, as a sixth instalment, it outdid the fifth film. I rate it a perfect. Now, we move in now to the 21st of November 2010, when the seventh film in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 was released. And this actually chronicles Harry starting his journey to finding the Horcruxes and destroying Voldemort. So Harry, Ron and Hermione are now away from Hogwarts on their mission to find the remaining Horcruxes and destroy them. Needless to say, they haven't a clue how to destroy them at first. Well, they have the locket which they actually managed to find and retrieve from Dolores Umbridge. But among the new characters in this uh, in this particular instalment, 
we have Mondongus Fletcher, who should have appeared in the fifth film. Bill Weasley. The Carrows. Oh, no, that's in the second part, sorry. Um, so, Bill Weasley. Rufus Grimjaw. That's right. The new Minister for Magic. Although, we meet Kingsley Shacklebolt in the fifth film, but anyway, um, I should have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> well, uh, we meet. Reginald Catamol. Anyway. That's not what the film's about. It's about the quest for the Horcruxes. To destroy them, that is. Dobby returns, but he's killed at the end. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of deaths. and In part one, the, character, the character's deaths include Mad-Eye Moody, Dobby, Hedwig, um, Charity Burbage, but she's another of the new characters, but she doesn't last very long. Anyway, what do I think of part one? I think it's perfect. Now we move on. Well, seven months or six months to I believe this would have been the 6th of May 2011 when the final film in the franchise Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was released and this film actually concludes the search for the Horcruxes and the destruction of the remaining Horcruxes and henceforth the destruction of Voldemort himself and we also get to see deep into Professor Snape's memories for the love he had for Harry's mum Lily and how he came to be one of Harry's protectors in the first place Okay, now, only one new character springs to mind and it's in this part, and that is Aberforth Dumbledore, um, Dumbledore's younger brother. Oh no, too, because we also meet Helena Ravenclaw, the ghost of Ravenclaw Tower. And we, um, well, this is based, yes, the final confrontation between Harry and Voldemort. But, okay, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves here, because Harry has to die in order to destroy the Horcrux that's inside him. Or the part of Voldemort that's inside him. And Voldemort has to help him out there. How generous. <laughs> anyway, the final confrontation between Harry and Voldemort is what finishes Voldemort off, of course. And we have a happy ending for the series. And I think it's a perfect way to end the series. Now, no doubt you've all seen these films already, guys. So, um, of course, I'd encourage you to watch them again. And let me know what you thought in the comments. Until next time, have a good time watching movies. <laughs>